im Namen des Vaters und des Sohnes und des Heiligen Geistes. Amen. Der Herr sei mit euch und mit deinem Geist. Liebe Gemeinde, heute gedenken wir des Kreuzes Todes Jesu. Für einige eine Torheit, für andere ein Ärgernis. Uns Christen und Christinnen aber ein Zeichen der Hoffnung, dass keine Macht uns scheiden kann von der Liebe Gottes. Wir erfahren Leid, wir verursachen Leid. Wir laden Schuld auf uns, wir verlieren Gott aus den Augen. Wir fragen und zweifeln im Glauben. Und dennoch sind wir Gott willkommen. Der Evangelist Johannes schreibt, denn also hat Gott die Welt geliebt, dass er seinen eingeborenen Sohn gab, auf dass alle, die an ihn glauben, nicht verloren werden, sondern das ewige Leben haben. Uns allen einen gesegneten und besinnlichen Karfreitagsgottesdienst. Dear brothers and sisters, today on the Good Friday we think of the death of Jesus. For some people it was fully and for others it was a nuisance. But for us Christians it is a sign of hope that God, that nothing can can keep us apart from the power and the love of God. We experience suffering, we cause suffering, we burden ourselves with guilt, we lose sight of God, we question and doubt in faith, and yet we are all welcome to God. Thank you that we are with the German congregation, may, be, may, together, to, may together be with you together today here and to celebrate this service on the Good Friday. To all of us a blessed and contemplative Good Friday service. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. And I welcome the new chapter choir for a song.
Brothers and sisters in Christ, please arise. On the first page of the uh, paper that you have just received, we have the Psalm 22. And this Psalm will read uh, according to our two languages. So the English speaking congregation will read verse 1. And the next verse will be from the German-speaking congregation to the end. So we'll start with the English part and let us read together. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Mein Gott, des Tages rufe ich, doch antwortest du nicht, und des Nachts doch finde ich keine Ruhe. Yet you are enthroned as the Holy One, enthroned upon the praise of Israel. Unsere Väter hofften auf dich, und da sie hofften, halfst du ihnen heraus. To you they cried out and were saved. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. Sei nicht ferne von mir, denn Angst ist nahe, denn es ist hier kein Helfer. All my bones are on display. They look and stare upon me. Sie teilen meine Kleider unter sich und werfen das Los um mein Gewand. But you, Lord, do not be far from me. You are my strength. Come quickly to help me. Amen. Amen. Next, we are singing together hymn number 123 in the Green Book, but it's in this paper you are holding. Ah, Holy Jesus, what law have you broken? And we'll be changing the first verse will be in English, and the next verse will be in German as we have gone through this psalm. Thank you. We may be seated while we are singing, please. Thank you.
Thank you. Please arise for the confession of sin. Apostle John reminds us that if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We will confess our sins before God, and here also we have the two languages, but we are going to confess together in a lower voice that every language goes together. Let us take a period of silence before we confess. Before. Most merciful God, we bekennen, dass wir vor dir gesündigt haben, in Gedanken, Worten und Taten, mit dem, was wir getan haben, ebenso mit dem, was wir unterlassen haben, zu tun. Wir haben dich nicht von ganzem Herzen geliebt wie uns selbst. Wir bereuen das von ganzem Herzen. In deinem Namen, deines Sohnes, Jesus Christus, sei uns gnädig und vergib uns, damit wir nach deinem Willen und Weg weiterleben, deinem Namen zur Ehre. Amen. God has indeed mercy upon us and has given his son Jesus Christ to die for us. Therefore, in great confidence, I declare to all who believe in Jesus Christ, God has heard your confession. He claims you as his children and he forgives you your sin in Jesus' name. Amen. So again, we sing together, if you will only let God guide you, it's in the green book and also in our German songbook, and it's the same as by the first song, we just change the verses, and the German starts. While we are sitting. <laughs>
Thank you very much. And now is the time to hear the scripture readings. I will invite the two uh, who are going to read uh, when we start reading from uh, the English version and next will be in German version. And we'll read from Isaiah chapter 53 verse 4 to 7. And may I ask you to stand when we are reading the scripture, please. I'll read from the New International Version, Isaiah 53, 4 to 7. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering. Yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. We all like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before its shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. Ich lese aus Jesaja 53, die Verse 4 bis 7. Für wahr, er trug unsere Krankheit und lud auf sich unsere Schmerzen. Wir aber hielten ihn für den, der geplagt und von Gott geschlagen und gemartert wäre. Aber er ist um unsere Missetat willen verwundet und um unsere, um unsere Sünde willen zerschlagen. Die Strafe liegt auf ihm, auf das wir Frieden hätten und durch seine Wunden sind wir geheilt. Wir gingen alle in die Irre wie Schafe. Ein jeder sah auf seinen Weg, aber der Herr warf unsere aller Sünden auf ihn. Als er gemartert ward, litt er doch willig und tat seinen Mund nicht auf wie ein Lamm, das zur Schlachtband geführt wird und wie ein Schaf, das verstummt vor seinem Scherer, tat er seinen Mund nicht auf. We'll again hear the reading from 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18 to 22. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18 to 22. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. He was put to death in the body, but made alive in the spirit. After being made alive, he went and made proclamation to the imprisoned spirits, to those who were disobedient long ago, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah, while the ark was being built. In it, only a few people, eight in all, were saved through water. And this water symbolizes baptism, that now saves you also. Not the removal of dirt from the body, but the pledge of a clear conscience toward God. It saves you by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at God's right hand with angels, authorities, and powers in submission to him. This is the word of God. Ich lese aus 1. Petrus 3, Verse 18 bis 22. Denn auch Christus hat einmal für die Sünden gelitten, der Gerechte für die Ungerechten, damit er euch zu Gott führte. Er ist getötet nach dem Fleisch, aber lebendige Macht nach dem Geist. In ihm ist er auch hingegangen und hat gepredigt den Geistern im Gefängnis, die einst ungehorsam waren, als Gott in Geduld ausharrte zur Zeit Noahs, als man die Arche baute, in der wenige, nämlich acht Seelen, 
gerettet wurden durch Wasser hindurch. Das ist ein Vorbild der Taufe, die jetzt auch euch rettet. Denn in ihr wird nicht der Schmerz vom Leib abgewaschen, sondern wir bitten Gott um ein gutes Gewissen durch die Auferstehung Jesu Christi, welcher ist zur Rechten Gottes, aufgefahren gen Himmel, und es sind ihm untertan die Engel und die Gewalten und die Mächte. Amen. So we'll confess together our Christian faith, the Apostles' Creed, which unites us with other Christians around the world. And again, we'll confess in our own languages together. Let us confess together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, who suffered at the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he was dead. He ascended into heaven, and he seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the Lord, and the life of the last day. Amen. We may be seated. Thank you. Um, brothers and sisters in Christ, we are so thankful to God for such a blessing to be together again this year. Uh, last year we were together in Christmas Eve, and we are happy to see you again smiling, especially our friends from a German-speaking congregation, but we have missed you for some time. And thank you also for bringing us this good pastor here. So we are also making sure that we are making good use of her. Thank you. So now I greet your neighbor, please. Yesterday I went to the, one of the media studios and one asked me, is it okay to smile during the, the Lent? I said, yes, keep smiling because it's done already. We are just remembering what Jesus did for us. So while you are wishing peace to your neighbor, keep smiling. Yes, may the peace of God be with you all. Before we hear the sermon, I will uh, invite the new chapter choir to sing, and then the sermon today will be presented by Reverend Ursula.
May God give us a word for our heart and a heart for his word. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, we already heard the words for the sermon. It was Jesaja, Jesaja 53, 4 to 7. Jesaja 53, 4 to 7. Dear sisters and brothers, well, I had to look a second time because I wasn't sure whether I had misread. Yes, it was true. You know, German is not my, no, English is not my mother tongue. But it was true. It was many years ago when I realized the English translation of today's day. In German, it is Kar Freitag, but in the calendar, actually, in the English calendar, I read Good Friday. Not Bad Friday, Good Friday. I have never noticed that before. Good Friday, ein guter Freitag. I googled where it comes from, and I'm not so sure. Some claim that it is a kind of spelling mistake that has caught on. In fact, this day was originally, ca originally called God's Friday. Others say that the word good is, in his context, does not mean good, but it means holy. Be that as it may, I got stuck on the word good. And it was, and it has stuck with me ever since I first read it. And today I actually get to preach on Good Friday here 
in Azania Front Cathedral. Interesting, by the way, that Martin Luther already called Good Friday a good Friday, einen guten Freitag. So I ask again, so we heard the reading in Jesaja about Jesus being crucified as a Lamb of God. So I ask again, what is good about Good Friday? Our families and friends in Germany think it's good that Good Friday is a national holiday in our country. So the children have vacation, Likizo, Kwapasaka, even those who have nothing to do with religious significance of this day are happy to accept it. Nevertheless, the word good is not necessarily the first word that comes to many people's mind when they think of Good Friday. For example, there are the party heroes who like to party through every weekend in the clubs to feel that they are alive and who find it annoying that Good Friday is a quiet holiday, at least in Germany, it is not allowed. I think that's completely fine. The world is allowed to stand still on Good Friday precisely because it is still not the way God intended it to be. Good Friday, quiet, sad, or holy? That's what first comes to mind when I think of Good Friday. Christians all over the world remember the last day of Jesus Christ's life today, his arrest and not least the violence done to him and his death on the cross. Who's, those who go to church today are preparing themselves for this. Here in Azania Front, as in many other churches, the altar looks different without flowers and you can see the crown of miba, thorns. The songs are the songs that were and are sung today are also fitting for a day of mourning. They tell of the great man of sorrows, of the head full of blood and wounds, and of someone who innocently lost his life and did so vulnerably. They are sad, yet beautiful songs. I quite like singing them. If you are looking for the classic life-affirming, cheerful family service, you won't find it on Good Friday. But this brings me back to the question, what is good about Good Friday? Why is it called Good Friday in English-speaking countries? For an answer of this question, I look at what happened around Good Friday, back then, more than 2,000 years ago. It was the time of the Jewish Passover. Half the country was on its way to Jerusalem to take part in the celebrations, including Jesus and his friends. When they arrived in Jerusalem, a large crowd was waiting for them. The people were happy to see Jesus. They cheered him like a pop star of our time. They had already heard a lot about him. It was said that he could turn water into wine, had walked across the Sea of Galilee and had healed the sick. Yes, it was even said that Jesus could bring the dead back to life. What's more, he spoke about God and his kingdom like no other. The people of Jerusalem celebrated him. For if, as many said, he was the son of God, they, then they could hope in him. He would certainly free the people from the Roman occupation. But things turned out differently. There were also people who were indifferent to Jesus or who rejected him, even hated him. They were afraid for their power and influence. And so Jesus was betrayed and sold, arrested and tortured. He was 
put on trial. He was accused of blasphemy, the worst thing a person of Jewish faith could have accused to be, that, and that he had proclaimed himself king of the Jews. No way. Pontius Pilatus, the Roman governor in Jerusalem, condemned him to death. Jesus was then crucified on Good Friday. There he died slowly. It is a sad and terrifying story that Christians have remembered after year, year after year ever since. When I was still a teacher at elementary school, the children used to ask me, why did God allow this to happen? Why didn't he save his son? Well, yes, why? My answer, because it would not have been consistent. I believe that God became man in Jesus. Jesus was born like any other child. He was breastfed and swaddled and rocked to sleep. He was given a name. He lived a completely human life with everything that goes with it. He celebrated and he loved and he sang. In the eyes of many particularly pious, pious people, he was even a party hero. He could get incredibly angry and argued with many people. He was also unhappy, often lonely, in the midst of many people. And perhaps he was also in love, but that we certainly don't know. I do believe that one can say Jesus, the Son of God, and therefore God himself, was and is no stranger to anything human. Not even the pain, the suffering, the agony, all the bad things that are unfortunately part of every life. And that it was, and that is why God did not save Jesus from the torture and the cross. Jesus had to go this way to the end, all the way to death. This is how Good Friday ends, and God had begun at Christmas. Good Friday, a good day. The theologian Fulbert Stefensky, I appreciate him, I appreciate him very much, puts it this way, and I say it in German and in English. Kein Tod ist gut, der dem Menschen gewaltsam aufgepresst wird. Auch nicht der Tod dieses Sohnes Gottes, dessen sich die Christen erinnern. Kein Blut ist gut, das gewaltsam vergossen wird. Aber gut ist die Güte. Gut ist die Güte. Gut ist die Leidenschaft dieses Gottes, der nirgendwo anders sein will als dort, wo Menschen in ihrer Schwäche ertrinken und wo der Tod sie zeichnet, ehe sie geboren sind. So Fulbert Stefensky says, no death is good that is violently imposed on man, not even the death of his son of God, whom Christians remember. No blood is good that is shed violently, but goodness is good. Güte ist gut, goodness is good. Good is the passion of this God who wants to be nowhere else but where people drown in their weakness and where death marks them before they are born. The way Stefensky says it, I think Good Friday is a good day because it tells us that God wants to be as close to people as possible. We can see exactly what that means if we briefly, just briefly, assume the opposite of what actually happened. So let's assume that Jesus' friends stopped him back then outside Jerusalem and they said, 
No, if it's getting dangerous in there, don't, don't go there. We, we, we take another way around Jerusalem. We don't go into Jerusalem. It is too dangerous. And Jesus would have said, all right, if you don't want to, let's take another way. Stay in the, in the province. It's actually not bad living there either. What would change in our image, in our ideas of God? Well, it would be a fair weather God who avoids the problems, the depths and the tragedies of human life. A God who is only responsible for the sunny situations in life, decoration our, only decorating our anniversaries, whipped cream on the cake of our celebrations. A God of promotions and careers. Sure, he is important too, but he wouldn't be as good or even useless for the shady days. We would have to go into the dark valleys alone. Not a good word would be heard from him there. Where people scream, he would be out of earshot. Dear sisters and brothers, when it comes to the cross, things get serious. Life is always about the cross, for you, for me, for us all. And thus also about the inside. I believe in a God who has no remaining, I believe in a God who has not remained in heavenly heights but is at home in our valleys. Bonhoeffer puts it like this. Die Stunde unseres Scheiterns und unseres Leides ist die Stunde der unerhörten Nähe Gottes und gerade nicht der Ferne. Die Stunde unseres Scheiterns und unseres Leides ist die Stunde der unerhörten Nähe Gottes und gerade nicht der Ferne. The hour of our failure and our suffering is the hour of God's unheard of nearness and precisely not of distance. The hour of our failure and our suffering is the hour of God's unheard of nearness and precisely not of distance. All well and good. But if I have to go for a CT scan, I have to go in alone. If I am diagnosed with cancer, it's for me alone. And if I have to die, good. God, very close? How then? I can give you no other answer than this, that God is with us in the form of those who do not leave us alone in our suffering. And in the best case, that is our family and our friends, sometimes totally foreign people also. That he holds us in those who are close to us and hold us. In the support of these people, God holds us in a very concrete way. Yes, I have to go into the CT scan alone. I am the only one diagnosed with cancer. No one will take the chemotherapy away from me either, and dying will be mine alone at some point. But I know in the tube, I know during chemo, there are people out there who are trembling for me, who are there for me, who pray for me, who phone, who ask me how I am, who show me that they have not forgotten me in the hustle and bustle of every day's life, that I mean a lot to them. And I know that there will be people who will hold my hand forever when I say goodbye. And God is holding my hand in them. I trust in that. Dear brothers and sisters, I come to the end. The scene when Jesus' journey comes to an end, when he cries out on Golgotha, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? 
when he has the feeling that God, his Father, and the Father of us all is so infinitely far away, in this scene, the acid test of God's existence takes place to me. For I believe that he is by no means as far away as Jesus cries out, even if he feels that way, and so many, far too many, tormented people in this world. No, I believe that God is very close by. In Jesus' mother, Mary, in his favorite disciple, John, at least as close to Jesus as a brother. God is close to Jesus in the form of his family and friends. God is there. No, they can't really save him. They can't take him down from the cross and try to resuscitate him. But they can, and they do show him, we will not leave you alone. Even in the pain, tears us apart. We will stay with you. Yes, I believe that God remains with them in their suffering and does not get out. That's how Bonhoeffer sees it too. You remember the sentence? Die Stunde unseres Scheiterns und unseres Leides ist die Stunde der unerhörten Nähe Gottes und gerade nicht der Ferne. The hour of our failure and our suffering is the hour of God's unheard of closeness and not distance. God is there in suffering, does not get out. There, on the historical Golgatha and in the Golgathas of all times. If we, if we can make ourselves aware of this again and again, if we can believe it, Good Friday will really be a Good Friday. And Christians also trust that he, God, will provide the Big Bang at some point. Easter is about that, but that's another story after the day after tomorrow. Amen. And may the peace that surpasses all your understanding guard your hearts and minds in Jesus Christ. Amen. We thank God for this Good Friday message from Reverend Ursula. May God bless us and bless this word in our hearts. Amen. This time we are going to give our offerings and the new chapter choir will be singing and we'll only have one round of giving our offering this, this morning. So you are welcome to give cheerfully to our God.
We have just a few, uh, not announcements, but reminders about our services. This afternoon we'll have a Kiswahili service at 2 o'clock, which will also be along with the Easter drama in the afternoon. And on Sunday, the services are on in the normal time. Uh, the English service will be at 9 o'clock. The first Kiswahili service will be 7 o'clock, and the third service will be Kiswahili in 
30. So on Sunday, the services will continue as normal. And I would like to invite uh, Reverend Ursula for some announcements also to the German-speaking congregation. Thank you for the chance to, say, to, in, to make an invitation. Um, I want to invite all those people who speak German um, and yeah, who live here in Dar es Salaam um, to celebrate their faith in German and with us. So perhaps you have lived in Germany or you were a volunteer or you worked there or whatever, or you just learned German. Please tell people they are warmly invited to our services. We have them normally once a, once a month in Meringo Hall, and you, it's, an, it's an announced on our homepage. So please, please tell people when you know that they are interested in German language, they are warmly welcome. Asante Nisana. Thank you. May we arise for the prayers as we receive the offerings. Let us thank God for the offerings. God of mercy, we return with thanksgiving a small portion of that which you have given us. And with these gifts, we would offer ourselves to be used in your service through your Son, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us. Amen. Let's continue praying for our own needs and the needs of the world around us. Guter Gott, dein Sohn ist tot. Wir haben heute zu seinem Gedächtnis diesen Gottesdienst gefeiert und gespürt, dass deine Liebe nicht tot zu kriegen ist, dass sie spürbar wird in der Gemeinschaft von Menschen guten Willens. Gib uns Kraft, die Liebe zu wagen, die dein Sohn gelebt hat. Dann bleibt er gegenwärtig in Zeit und Ewigkeit. Almighty God and our most merciful Father, we call to mind before you all those whom it will be easy to forget, the homeless, the destitute, the sick, the aged, and all who have none to care for them. Help us to heal those who are broken in body and spirit, and to turn their sorrow into joy. Grant this, Father, for the love of your Son, who for our sake became poor. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for you. Gott, in deine Hände befehlen wir uns und unsere Welt. Wo dein Name missachtet wird, gib Mut zum Bekennen. Wo ohne dich der Weg auf Abwege führt, Wende Herzen und Sinne zur Umkehr. Sei bei allen Frauen, Männern und Kindern, die unsägliche Gewalt erfahren müssen. Lass uns nicht aufgeben, dagegen vorzugehen. Und bitte hilf uns dabei, wo Unfriede herrscht, schenke Versöhnung. Wo Angst und Not sich ausbreiten, gewähre Obdach. Wo Schuld bekannt wird, gewähre Gnade. Wo Ob Ohnmacht herrscht, Führe durch die Stille hin zu dir, wo Leid zu Hause ist, lindere Schmerzen. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, guide the nations of the world into ways of justice and truth, and establish among them that peace which is the fruit of righteousness. 
that they may become the kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus. O oh God, it is your will to hold both heaven and earth in a single piece. Let the design of your grace, love, shine on the waste of our wrath and sorrow, and give peace to your church, peace among nations, peace in our homes, and peace in our hearts. Grant us, Father, that your holy and life-giving spirit may move every human heart that the barriers which divide us may crumble, suspicions disappear, and hatred cease, and that with our divisions healed, we might live in justice and peace through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Let's now say the Lord's Prayer in our both languages. Our Father, Father in heaven, geheiligt werde dein Name, dein Reich komme, dein Wille geschehe, wie im Himmel, so auf Erden. Unser tägliches Brot gib uns heute und vergib uns unsere Schuld, wie auch wir vergeben unseren Schuldigern. Und verliere uns nicht in Versuchung, sondern erlöse uns von dem Bösen, denn dein ist das Reich und die Kraft und die Herrlichkeit in Ewigkeit. Amen. So geht in diesen Freitag, in diesen Good Friday, in diesen Karfreitag mit der Hoffnung auf Ostern. So geht mit Gott und seinem guten Geist, der will, dass wir leben, zurück in euren Alltag. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his face upon you and give you peace in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us be seated. We'll hear the last song from the choir and we'll sing together the closing hymn after.
Dear sisters and brothers, let us sing our last hymn. Now the green blade rises. It's a very nice song. I don't know if it is so much known here in the congregation. So let us just try. So we will have the English and the German verses, and we have six of them. At the end, we really know the song. Thank you very much for joining us all today for this service, the Good Friday, Karfreitag. And this last song even shows us a little bit what is coming the day after Saturday. So there will be Easter. So I wish you all a blessed Good Friday and see you again on Sunday. Have a good way back home. Go in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.